these days, one of the first questions people ask in a new place is, do you have Wi-Fi? Right, right. But there are now some apps that can help people communicate without the need for an internet connection. Yeah, one of those is San Mateo-based Jot, which has connected half a million teenagers without data plans. The other is Canada-based Yo from Yo.com, which connects people in unconnected places. The CEO of Yo, Chris Jensen, joins us live this morning. Chris, thanks for taking the time. I got to tell you, when I'm <laughs> offline. I love being offline, but now I feel with Yo, you are enticing me. You're kind of bringing me back. Uh, basically, Yo, you can send a message. How does it work without being online? Well, it actually uses the Wi-Fi. Uh, in North America, we tend to think that Wi-Fi equals Internet, um, but it's not true. So you go from your device to the Wi-Fi, mm -hmm. and then we just go across the Wi-Fi and down. So rather than up over all that Internet stuff and slowing down, it's just phone to phone through the Wi-Fi. And yeah. the goal here is to connect everyone in the world. Connect, connect everybody to everybody. Um, there's a whole bunch of companies from the Bay Area trying to connect everybody to the Internet. Um, what we're trying to do is connect everybody to each other. And you've already connected about a half million users in Bangladesh, Costa Rica, Mexico, mm -hmm. Singapore. So while we joke about you know, going to Muir Woods and wanting to get away from right. it all, mm -hmm. these are people in countries where perhaps that need for communication is, is desperate. Absolutely. Well, my development team is based in Bangladesh. And this actually came out to solve their problem. Um, the power goes off four times a day in the office. When the power goes off, the internet dies. But they still wanted to share things with each other. They needed to share texts and images and pictures and all sorts of things. And they just couldn't do it because the internet kept dying. Um, and if you do have internet access, it's so slow and it's so congested that moving a big file, and as we know, videos and pictures are getting bigger and bigger all the time, that was just impractical. But you've got 200 million people in India getting a smartphone for the first time this year, mm -hmm. and they want stuff on it. They, they want pictures, they want the, the family video of the wedding, they want, I've taken a picture, here, have it. And then Yo just lets you do that, just moves it from person to person, no data. It's part of the motivation that, that nowadays, if you're not connected to at mm -hmm. least something or mm -hmm. someone by any kind of way, mm -hmm. you're behind the curve. You are, and we're in a society where people run their lives off their smartphone. Mm -hmm. For good or bad, that, that's what people do. So if you see anybody out, you're on vacation, you're on a ski run, um, you go down, you take a video of your friend skiing down to the bottom, you don't want to wait until you get home and then exchange that video. Um, just on the chairlift on the way back up, say, hey, you look good in the video, do you want mm. it? And send it to them. Um, kind of on that note, Chris, so I mean, we mentioned the other Bay Area messaging uh, mm -hmm. app, Jot, at the mm -hmm. top of the segment, but uh, would you say that messaging is still king when it comes to Instagram, Facebook, comparison, snapping with Snapchat. Is, is messaging number one? Messaging is the big driver behind it. Um, right. But the actual more deeper uh, emotional level is people want images. They want their things. They want their games, their apps. They want their videos. They want the pictures. That's what binds people together. You, you take a picture of a family wedding. You want everybody at the wedding to have that picture. Mm -hmm. um, saying, hi, you look good in this picture is nice. But seeing the picture is what really counts. Mm -hmm. I remember, I think back very recently to the Paris attacks. And people were mm -hmm. using Facebook. Facebook to say, hey, I'm okay for, let's say, they have family in the States. Right. I'm imagining mm -hmm. this might be mm -hmm. useful in times of natural disaster, yep. man-made disaster. Mm -hmm. it's, it could be a survival tool, really. Absolutely. What, one of the use cases, one of the things that drove us to do this was the Ebola crisis in Liberia and Sierra Leone. Um, Doctors Without Borders and a whole bunch of agencies had an awful lot of really good material in local languages to distribute. But the internet was crippled when they got out there because of the crisis. So they couldn't share it. They had to employ young lads wearing sneakers and riding bikes to print material and take oh, it out. The old-fashioned way. Old-fashioned sneaker net. Um, what they really needed was Yo on their phone. Then they could take it out, give it to the villagers and say, here's the video, it's in your language, you can now understand it. Have you found that this uh, app is catching on? It's really taking off. We've uh, only launched it five months ago. We have half a million installs. Um, it's in 121 countries and it's just it's picking up rapidly because if you get it then you go hey i need to share with my friends so it has this viral sharing effect well i know you were in town for a conference you're on your way to the airport to go back to canada to yep. vancouver so uh, thanks for taking the time and stopping in chris you're more than welcome all right Thank chris you. jensen